Thank you. Andreas, thank you. Our first CEO keynote speaker is a familiar face at the CBIT Global Conferences, and he can always be counted on to add content value. His talks have included the five mega trends reshaping enterprise communications and collaboration. And last year, he showed us how companies can move to the cloud, use existing technologies to do that, and keep their CFOs happy in the process. I'm happy to have him on the stage this year to talk about how good business communication should not be just a matter for the guys in the IT department. His name is Hamid Akavan. He's the CEO at Siemens Enterprise Communications, and this is where he will begin. Formula One is a relentless business. It doesn't wait for teams to um, to grow up. So it's really important for us to build a very competitive team very quickly. The measure of the success of your business largely. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, happy to be here uh, at the momentous CBIT occasion. And uh, good morning and good afternoon to the audience participating uh, on the web via the uh, uh, web streaming. Um, proud to be here and talk about uh, our vision of um, collaboration and teamwork in the future, and today, as we call it, Amplify Teams concept. Um, I know that uh, we, all are, we, 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 uh, we all are looking for hidden assets in our businesses in order to propel our businesses forward, find some key elements in the balance sheet of the business that we have not maximized, find something in the business that has not been fully squeezed in order to create competitive advantage. I know I run a very competitive business and I know that every single day, uh, me and my team will sit down together and try to figure out, is there something more we could do with the business? And I can tell you that there's one big, big asset within the businesses that is not being tapped, at least not tapped near its full potential. And that is teamwork or team output. This may seem like a cliche because we all grew up with a concept of understanding what is a team, what's teamwork. We all understood that the output of an enterprise, of a company, is more than the sum of each individual output. So a company by definition, produces more than just adding up all the individual efforts. But what is that multiplier effect? How much more should we expect from a group of people that work in a company together as a result of their teaming effort? How much is that? Well, I can tell you that it can be far, far more than it is today. And there's a reason for that. The reason is that Things have changed. The environment, the way we work, things have changed. And the team concept, as we had it, as we all understood it from years past, is no longer applicable. The teams work differently. Our employees work differently. Our customers expect us to work differently. But we use the same principles and measure the same principles as we had in the past. And therefore, there's a huge untapped potential. And here, my goal today is, to exemplify some of those good things that we could do together to take advantage of that, uh, that opportunity. So let's take a look at the uh, traditional way we have always measured um, you know, a, a introduction of a new tool or introduction of a new technology in our enterprise. We have always looked at reducing costs, something very tactical. We have looked at 
you know, things like toll bypass using SIP trunking, um, reducing, uh, you know, reducing uh, costs for uh, long distance or conferencing, um, and all of those actually provide significant amount of savings, and they will continue to do that in the future. And the potential there is significant. I can give you an example of uh, right here in Germany, one of the best examples I can give you, um, the German Employment Agency, which we just modernized their entire infrastructure. We, know, we took them from 1,900 locations where they had equipment in to 11 locations. That's 97% reduction. We have reduced their air conditioning units from to by 98%. Just the power usage alone has been 3 million euros per year. Forget about all the other things. But that is just the tactical stuff. And that will always be there. Those savings will always be there. But there's a lot more that we could do if we take a more strategic view of how a company should work together, how a team should work together, and try to maximize the productivity of the teams by giving them additional tools and equipment that enables them to work more effectively together. And that's the concept of amplifying teams that I will be discussing in the next few slides. So why focus on teams and why focus now? Um, as I mentioned, you know, first of all, the communication has become a lot more complex. I remember that it used to be a telephone. That's when we said telecommunication used to be a telephone. Then it became a telephone and a computer. Then it became a telephone and a computer and a cell phone. And now it's 10,000 or 20,000 apps. There's a lot of things. Whether they come through your PC, whether they come through your tablet, whether they come through your mobile phones, in, in many, many ways, and each one of them is proliferating in many different ways. So telecommunication has become an overwhelming mess. It is great in a sense that it gives us diversity, in a sense that gives us many, many more options that we had prior years. But if we don't use it properly, but if we are not able to bring them together, it actually becomes a hindrance. It becomes a barrier to the way teams work, because we spend most of the time struggling with the equipment, with the application, trying to learn how it works, trying to learn a new thing, and trying to adapt to each other, and not spending as much time working on the content, working on what it takes to increase team productivity. Now, why do we have to deal with all of that to begin with? Why are all of these things coming? Who asked for them? Well, I guess they came as a result of the fact that we're, we're no longer working in traditional teams. We're not no longer working in traditional environments. We have become virtual. We have become mobile as a result of the way the businesses have developed, as a result of the way our customers expect us to work with them. Our products have become more global. Our products have become more distributed. And so we have no choice but introducing these tools, introducing these technologies and applications in order to be able to cope with all of that. And of course, we all know that at the same time, we have squeezed as much as we can on the cost side in terms of downsizing, right sizing the staff. And so the combination of the two has really, really made for a very difficult environment. And that's why we have to revisit the concept of teaming and how much we actually get out of each team. So in order to take advantage of that, let's take a look at how the nature of teaming has changed, what it used to be. What it used to be was we had a lot of face-to-face -face meetings. I remember uh, you know, earlier days when I was a younger employee uh, working for a, a, in a group of about two to 300 employees that we all were in the same building. Um, there was at least a couple of times a week when we all got together. So I remember then Monday mornings, our division manager, the person that was most in charge of the, 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 the highest ranking officer in charge of that unit, uh, pull us all together. Monday mornings, there was always uh, you know, free breakfast, you know, coffee. We all got together. We heard what, was the, what we were going to do. You know, he told us what we did last week, you know, what was the great accomplishments we had last week, and what we needed to do this week, and you know, gave us some recognition for job well done, highlighted some things we needed to fix. And you know, we had a lot of face-to-face, -face, and we had a lot of time after that as employees to hash those topics, to talk about them, to discuss those topics further to amplify what we heard, to hear from each other the interpretation of what we heard. 
and, you know, energize ourselves around that. That was Monday mornings. And I remember at lunch times on Fridays, we always had pizza, getting together, recognizing the new employees. This was not about repeating what we said on Monday. That was going to be the next Monday. But we talked about what we seen, recognizing the new employees that had joined the company, you know, hearing from them who they are, where they come from, what they bring to the, to, to the table, understanding about their expertise and their focus so that later on when we wanted to reach out and get information, we knew who the expert was. We knew what the focus of this person was. So embracing a new team member coming to the team. So we did have quite a bit of interactions. And if you wanted to have a problem solved during a week, the easiest thing to do was walk a half a floor walk from one end of the floor to the other, and just you know, tap a few people sitting in their offices, pull them out, or cubes, pull them out, get them into a short you know, meeting in a conference room, and just talk about what we needed to do. And we had very rudimentary um, IT systems, but they were adequate for what we did. It was absolutely enough for that kind of environment. We didn't need any more. Telephones were there, you know, a few emails we, you know, emails, we didn't even need as much of that. You know, there was a lot of opportunities for face-to-face. -face. We had a few IT-provided whiteboards, actual whiteboards, that we would get on there, you know, take the pen cap off and, you know, and just uh, start writing, and, uh, you know, that, that was all we needed. Well, well things have changed today. We're not in the same place. We are mobile. We are, you know, and information, who's the expert? Uh, who has the most information, up-to-date information about a situation at hand? I think we're looking at crowdsourcing as the best way to do that. What is crowdsourcing? I mean, one of the greatest things you see these days, and you know, media has obviously taken advantage of that more than the companies, is the concept of crowdsourcing. I'm really interested when there is an event in the world, when there's news somewhere in the world, you know, you see uh, CNN, for instance, if you go to their website, you know, there's a, there's a link that says, are you there? You know, if you're there, you're an average person, average bystander there, and you have your cell phone with you, and you have a camera on it, you have a video clip, you can start taking a video, and there is no reporters on site, but you can be the reporter on site because you're the closest, you see what's happening. This is called crowdsourcing. Now, why is that not also available in the enterprises? That, that is the enterprises are going. Who has the latest information about development of a topic? Is there a customer issue? Is there a sales to be made and a customer has raised, or the potential customers has raised the question? Who can answer that the fastest? That is the concept of crowdsourcing. That's how we work today. You know, the conversations are endless now in a business, multifaceted. We continue to work you know, uh, on, a, on a very long cycle of communication about closing a deal or fixing a problem. It's no longer pulling five people together. And the tools, certainly the tools have become a lot more sophisticated, but many of those tools actually are introduced today by the employees, not by the IT departments. The employees are far ahead of the IT departments in terms of bringing in what it takes to run the business the way I just described, to work on a crowdsourced model, to work on a virtual model, on a mobile model. So employees are bringing more and more equipment and devices into the office, and IT departments are running to catch up with that. Now, this is, uh, this is all as, as, as a result of necessity, and this is something that uh, you know, allows the employees to become most productive, but these tools need to ultimately become better supported, it needs to become standard tools in the environment, and, and need to become uh, more um, manageable from an IT perspective. So, I mentioned that the focus has shifted from the tools to the user and user experience. And I believe this is a concept we need to embrace. I think this is something that um, the IT departments have to start shifting their focus on and not dictating the standard old issue tools because they will not be adequate for the, for the environment that these users are using. Um, and you know, I can say that the, the users um, have, have shown us what happens on a consumer side by bringing these Android and iPhone and iOS devices into the office. The good news is that these technologies are available and we do not have to fight against them, rather we need to bring them and embrace them and bring them to the enterprise. Now, with all of those tools, with all of those that the employees have brought into the enterprise and all of these things that I just described, Studies show that about 62%, this was a study done by Ipsos and Reuters, that 62% of the employees that are working in virtual environments actually find themselves socially isolated. They feel in, that they're inadequate, they're receiving inadequate information. 
and they're, they're not able to contribute as much. And what happens if we turn all of that into, into gains for the business? How much more benefit we would get by being able to deliver this, uh, in, uh, this, this isolation into a productivity gain in a business? So we conducted our own study. At Siemens Enterprise, we conducted a very large study talking to hundreds of different um, users and decision makers in a large number of companies, and we discovered some very revealing things. First, we dis discovered that 79% of people we talk to are already working in virtual teams. Remember that whole Monday morning we all get together, on Friday we get together? Well, that's gone. 79% of the time, that is no longer the case. And it's only a matter of time before it even becomes larger than 79%. Now, at the same time, most, more than about 80% of these cases, we're still using the same traditional tools we had 10 years ago that I talked about, when we used to get together and that was the way we did business. So they're using telephones, conference calls, and emails. Now among those three, email is probably the only thing that can be considered a more of a virtual tool, allowing for virtual teaming. But, you know, email is hardly emotional. Email is hardly trust building. Email is hardly bonding building. What we used to have on Monday mornings and Fridays, getting to see the person, talking to him, hearing from them. You know, email is hardly the me mechanism to do that. But that's what the enterprises are using. 80% of the enterprises are still using those tools, while the same number, almost 79% of the enterprises, are working in virtual um, type of environment. So what is the result of that? You know, 43% of the people we talk to are frustrated and overwhelmed. The employees are frustrated with what they have. And as a result, only about half of them, 44% of them, feel that they can make the same type of team building and team spirit and teamwork as they used to have. So only half are able to make the same kind of teaming as they used to do on a face-to-face -face basis. So that's the huge potential that is remaining on the table. Well, so what happens when these people are frustrated? What happens when the employees are unable to make these and use the old tools, telephone calls, conference calls, and emails as the only tools they have? Well, in our study, we discovered that 75% of the employees are distracted during these virtual meetings. They're not engaged because they don't have a way to participate. They don't have an easy way to take their to put their word in, and I think that's a huge loss. And, you know, 34% of, uh, you know, uh, workers uh, are not doing their share. That's their own admission. About a third of the employees we talked, they believe they're not putting in a full amount of effort. Now, that is the untapped potential that we have to capture. So, how are the companies dealing with this? How many of the, how many percent of the companies actually recognize this untapped potential and taking advantage of it? Well, in our study, only 8%, only 8% of the companies had an effective mechanism for managing virtual teams. Only 8%. So 90% or so of the companies are not even addressing this problem yet in an effective way. So you can imagine how large the potential is here. So, you know, the collective network has, has fractured. You know, we, we, we don't talk to each other as much. You know, we have multiple and redundant ways to get the information. And there's so many ways that uh, this, uh, this fracture in the, in, in, in the network essentially has impacted the employee base. But there are companies who are leading the charge. As I said, there are some companies who are already well ahead of the pack in terms of recognizing and taking advantage. One of our great customers here in Germany, the Commerzbank, actually started a few years ago by bringing that isolated voice-only fractured network into the mainstream of their information infrastructure. So for them, we replaced you know, equipment at 1,500 locations where they had PBXs and brought their 55,000 employees under one coherent network where the voice and the rest of the information in the enterprise can be connected to bring this uh, modernization and take advantage of the uh, team spirit and teamwork that employees can have. So the opportunity is clear. The opportunity is absolutely clear. And this is the time 
as we have said, to focus on amplifying teams, focus on bringing these, these uh, solutions. Now moving, the first thing we have to do is we have to start thinking that we are moving from ports to people. We are moving from ports to people. The mindset is that we should no longer just measure per, you know, ports, connectivity, you know, devices, add-ons, technical support. All of those things will be there. As I mentioned, the savings will be there. But we have to start thinking about how do we make people more productive? We measure the productivity of the teams. And that's something that we're not used to. But there are companies that are, as I said, in every area leading the pack. One of our, um, one of our great customers, a, f a giant pharma a company, Solvay, in, in Brussels, uh, uses unified communication as a measure, as, as a tool to get happier, satisfied employees. They have a younger employee base in a very competitive industry. And for them, the, the way to get these employees to become not only more productive, but also more satisfied is by introducing the tools in unified communication, the modernized tools that the employees can actually measure their own productivity and work in a team in a spirit. Now, what's our vision? What's the grand vision? What's the grand vision of the amplifying teams and team spirit? Now, we try to put this in five different buckets and divide it into five different things. The first thing is that we believe the conversations will have to be vibrant. It is not just voice, it is not just video, it is not document sharing, it's not a screen sharing, it's, it's not instant meetings, instant messaging, it's not just a voicemail, it, it's all of that. It's all of that. It depends on what the topic is. It depends on how large the team is. It depends on how urgent the, 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 the issue is. It depends, and we are not the ones to define that. It depends on a company, it depends on a team, it depends on the job at hand, as I said. But all of those things have to be brought together. We believe that the conversation is only, a virtual conversation is only as rich as a face-to-face -face conversation when you have all of those things brought together in an effective way, and all of that is available to the teams. Now, if they're using all of those different mechanisms for conversation, as I just talked about, all of those things and expanding, the social app, the social media that is coming in, in, on, in addition to all of that, the Twitter feeds, the everything else. Now, we need to be able to capture all of that conversation. Well, it's no longer a voicemail, it's not a recording, because there's so many different channels. So we have to have this, what we call thought trails. We have to have a mechanism to document, to capture that history, to be able to search it, filter it, and deliver the information. It's no longer meeting minutes. There's so much more in that whole interaction. So the tools to capture the thought trails. We say be seamless, which means in essence mobility. But it's far more than a traditional simple definition of mobility. It is not just to walk around and talk. It is being able to use multiple channels of communication on multiple devices, on multiple applications, in multiple geographies. That is seamless. It's a lot broader than just carrying your cell phone around. Focus. With all of that, you should still be able to focus as a user and say, I want to hear what I want to hear. I want to be focusing on this topic right now. I do not want to be bothered with everything else. I am part of many things, but when I want to focus on something, I should be able to do this very simply, very clearly. And then lastly, go beyond. Remember that the communication of that broad and that scope should still be part of other enterprise uh, uh, technologies and solutions. So integration and aggregation is also where we focus on. And we think that we have to introduce elements of location and security and privacy and automation in all of that. So there has to be open interfaces and, and uh, ways to integrate with the rest of the enterprise uh, to, to realize that vision. Now, let's have a conversation about the things that we, we have to ask ourselves in the enterprise. Do our virtual teams effectively collaborate? You know, are we fragmented? Do we have a way to manage employees that are living in different geographies? And can they work from anywhere? Um, there are companies now that obviously ask these questions many, you know, many months and years ago, and we have been working with them. I can, I can as, as, as examples, uh, you know, talk about companies such as you know, Coca-Cola, where they started asking these questions and they wanted to bring their you know, global workforce under one umbrella of effectiveness using the tools that we have talked about, and we did that for them uh, over the course of the past few years, and along the way, you know, managed to earn um, their award for being their global enterprise supplier of the year. Uh, there's Fiat, 
a, a very visionary company that has started a few years back doing the same thing, trying to bring their developers and production team all together to speed up the production cycle, now working better across geographies with Chrysler and their you know, facilities in Latin America. So there are companies that have actually have asked these questions and are leading the charge, bringing this solution and making it more commercial, and we're proud to be working with them and learning from them. Do we have to wait a long time to get to this vision? And do we have to wait a long time for all of this to become uh, available? The good news is no. There are, today there are on-ramps for us to get on this vision of Amplify Teams, this grand vision of Amplify Teams, without throwing away anything that we have already in place. There is no reason to rip and replace. There are excellent solutions we have learned in deploying them for a large, many of large global companies that we can take advantage of the infrastructure that is there. We can still deliver the savings like they used to ask and we're still asking. All of the examples I gave have resulted in major, major cost savings. But also there are on-ramps, no regret moves, to allow us to start heading towards this vision of amplifying teams without having to backtrack. This is, this is not a temporary solution. These are solutions that are essentially leading towards the grand vision. So here's a few things that I can highlight just to make it more tangible. Looking at your connecti uh, connecting the mobile workers, OpenScape uh, mobility allows seamless integration of mobility across the enterprise using the Wi-Fi networks, using the cellular networks, using all the other networks, fixed networks in a seamless way without any drop in a conversation and reducing costs. Taking a look at raising the team's productivity. You know, the web collaboration tools available today that are overlay solutions that are available without installation of any software, any software installed, not disrupting the IT, a security disrupting the IT existing infrastructure. Immediately, instantly starting to use web collaboration. Enabling uh, you know, virtual coaches with instant meetings where you can provide great training across large geographies, have engaged people in conversations, whiteboarding, screen sharing, all of that, again, without disrupting the IT environment that is there in place. Boosting help desk by using a secure advisor, for instance, that allows you know, the, desk to, the help desk people to see the customer's screen and try to help them walk through very securely with their permission. Trade, if you are a commodity trader, financial trader, energy trader, you want to have an all IP environment for your trading, which allows integration of the rest of the enterprise information very quickly, we have a solution for that. And if you want to have, in these days of constant communication and engagement with the customers, dealing with disaster recovery, dealing with loss of the contact center, loss of the contact with the customers, which, which we have recently seen in many cases around the world. Well, how about a cloud-based solution that within 60 minutes gets your contact center back up, no matter where in the world your customers are. So with all of that, I bring my presentation to the end, but I do invite you to please stop by Hall 13 and see some of these things that I just described to you in action for yourself. Thank you very much for your attention. you right on time. Thank you very much. Thank you. But you didn't say what happens to the pizza lunches on Fridays. They're, they're gone. We, they're uh, gone forever? The cost savings, I think. Yeah, yeah. okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay.